stories and the narratives of enslaved people have been untold. They've been forgotten. George Mason wouldn't have been successful without the labor that the enslaved people did for him. Every experience that I had, like just coming onto the plantation from driving up to it and looking to my right and seeing these massive empty fields, I'm just like, wow, like people were out here working constantly. We also went to the Fairfax County Courthouse, and I think it was there that we were able to get a copy of George Mason's will. For me, that really stood out um, because you could see like the list of enslaved people's names, and so you have human beings being listed along with objects and animals. So we're just like really dehumanizing to see that. The purpose of the Enslaved Children of George Mason project was to give George Mason University undergrads an opportunity really to dive deep and explore the lives, the habits, the culture, the acts of resistance of men, women, and children enslaved at George Mason's Gunston Hall. With Mason being one of the more uh, culturally diverse schools in the country, I feel as though it's important for students to research and bring to light to the university community um, all aspects of the university, of our university's namesake. And I just thought it would be something that would be important to give back to our community of students, seeing as though we are a campus of many, many faces and cultures and religions and beliefs. The president's visit originated in an idea that the president had about seeing Gunston Hall through the eyes of the students. And walking the grounds of Gunston Hall was also walking the ground of the place of the ancestors of enslaved individuals. There's a lot of work that can be done in the archives and a lot of work that can be done by just reading at sources, but none of that really compares to being able to be in the actual space where uh, important historical events uh, took place. The founding fathers that we r rightfully uh, celebrate and, and honor for their contributions to the creation of the American Republic, uh, they were also part of, a, of an unjust system. There's just still a lot to be done and helping the current state of our generation recognize what we have done in the past and making sure that that is known. It's very important that we just bring light to things that may have been forgotten and families that have been forgotten. This is Sinharp, aged 11 years when purchased. Oronico, aged 12 years, likely bought directly from an Atlantic slave trader. Charity, a girl, age five years. Cato, entered property ledger at 10 years old. Frederick, a man listed as not worth one farthing. Let, a man aged 45 in 1792. Jenny, a girl aged eight years. This is uh, James, who was George Mason's manservant. Um, he dressed George Mason's wigs and attended to his person. Agnes, a girl aged eight years when her name was entered into property records. He is Watt, a man who ran away in 1786, aged 35 years old. 